Today we're working on a 96 Dodge 1500, so it doesn't matter, any 5.2 or 5.9 Magnum gasser, it's all the same. We're putting on an aluminum plenum plate. Pretty sure this one warped because I've been eating oil. Down on power. There's a bunch of symptoms. Got this kit, it's like 160 bucks delivered. Hughes engines, I'll put a link in the description for the kit. It's pretty sweet, has all the gaskets. So we're gonna run through here quick. I'm gonna show you how that it's gonna go on there. We'll see if uh, we'll keep eating oil. Nice crispy battery terminals. Now this truck's quick with a pickaxe as battery removal. Basically it's all strapped in there. We're gonna drain coolant, take this top radiator line off, remove this shroud, remove the fan out of the way, um, and then we'll catch up from there. Pulls up and out. Now, if you look, this is a this is built for Dodge, pre-notched. Somebody had already had this cut out. The other one that I had, it was broken out. You break these out here, that way you can get it out without having to take the whole fan off. So, once you have it off, pre off it. It's easy to cut your hands on this. Set it back in there away. So I have to remove this alternator, this AC pump, this pulley here. That's why I took this fan off. That way I can kind of get to all the bolts and I can pull this whole bracket out as one. And this idler pulley out of the way. long bolt there we're gonna get rid of this air box and I was messing around with it earlier before I started recording so I already have it loosened see all that up on that filter I think it's something to do with PCG valve or, or I don't know, maybe I have bad PCV valves. Maybe the whole problem. Maybe I should just put some on here, I don't know. There's a screw that comes down through here to bolt one of this bracket. And the PCV, see PCV valve goes in the, goes into there. So the idea is to take this whole bracket off. We'll remove the alternator and the compressor at the same time. Now there's still wires I have to take out of here, but uh, 
actually, that's not one of the bracket bolts. This is one of the bracket bolts down here. know that if I need that wrench again where it's at it's in the catch pan of coolant <laughs> yeah that's coming out that's getting redone anyway well that's interesting I took that line off that goes under the water pump and now the rest of the radiator is draining I thought I was just out of coolant uh, apparently I'm not. That's good. I don't have to look for a mystery coolant leak now. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the IPR. What's that? It's a high pressure reservoir. Oh, okay. Huh. So you're not but thinking it's that? For what or? I'm seeing is, I don't know, I got too much time in this thing. He's no. disgusting. He's just trying to sell the truck. Yeah. He's like, he's just gonna call around and find somebody to come and take it. He's like, okay. I got. I'll give him two grand for it. Probably take it. It's important to notice that there's going to be wires that go to the back of the starter along with two connectors for the AC compressor. These need to be removed before you can get this bracket up out of the way. This awesome shot that you see here of my arm is me removing the cables from the throttle body. They just snap in and out. If you need to, you can use like a screwdriver to pry on them a little bit. It might make it a little bit easier for you. patch I did a couple months ago. I guess it worked. I kind of forgot about it. That's why I never fixed it. These are Torx head bolts and they hold down the fuel rail 
so that's how the injectors are set down to the motor and how they're held stationary. Well, these clips are, whatever the clip parts are, they must have broke them off because these came off. But the other side ain't, so I gotta figure that out. The hell they just squeeze? That side is like that off. I don't know, let's be careful part here. I want to get as much as I can to lay over off to the side. So I'm not fighting with it, you know what I mean? I had a really awesome dream last night. The dream was. Yeah. <laughs> the dream was, I needed a bolt, and I had shelves and racks full of every bolt. It was the best feeling in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, dude, I'll have to go drive ten miles for three bolts. I think it's telling the future, honestly. where the catch is on these. I'm not sure if that's how it works. But the point is, they're coming off. All right, you get the full on removed. You get all your electrics off the injectors. Uh, that whole thing just pulls right off. You can set that out of the way now. And then uh, kind of assess where we're at. I think I'm ready to take this, this intake off. Uh, vacuum line here. That's off. A vacuum line here going up to the brake booster. Uh, that's off. Um, there's some kind of vacuum valve there, but I don't think that's going to matter much. What else can we get out of the way here? This is the farthest back bolt back in here, and I'm touching it no problem. Two, three, four. So how many we got? One, two, three, I'm thinking four. Okay, I think this comes the whole way out here or something. You go out. Do you want to grab some battery terminals for me? No. Okay. Oh, okay. Decent ones. We don't want no junk. Yeah. I hate these lines right here. Not a bejesus man. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's important to note that in the kit, you actually do get another one of these radiator lines. So if you have to cut it off, it can. That's probably what I should have done here.
starting to unbolt the air intake manifold. Which is exciting. Because that means eventually we're going to start putting things back together. Same thing down the other side. Now, because I'm a professional, my camera died, so I didn't get the shot of me taking the air intake out of the truck. However, once all the bolts are out, you simply just lift it straight up and out. <laughs> yep. There's weeds inside there. <laughs> yeah. Love the idea of 
torquing it. So if you don't torque it, you're doing it again. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. They even have their torque pattern listed on this paper. So I'd sit in here. The directions are pretty decent. They're not going to go into the detail about taking everything apart, but just more so about how did the gaskets. Your first round is going to be 48 inch pounds. Second round is going to be 84 inch pounds. And then your third round, just verifying that they're all at 84 inch pounds. Goop it up. Goop it up. What? Um, over by the compressor, there's like a male. <laughs> I just said I found it quickly. It's very important that you keep the corners between that rubber gasket and the intake manifold gaskets. As you can see, <laughs> I am doing there. Put it on both the top yeah, side and the bottom side of your rubber pieces. Short of a miracle. <laughs> First try past all the wires. Gaskets didn't move. Just think right in there. Now we're going to torque down this intake. What we do this is we're going to start with the four bolts that are in the middle. And you'll know they're at because they're going to be in between where your ejectors go. So we're going to start with 36 inch pounds. Right there. Cross over. come ahead and hit these at 60 foot pounds inch pounds I'm sorry Finish this up at 72. There's 72. So then the rest of these bolts will just drop in. And they're all gonna get torqued right away to 72 inch pounds, which is 12 foot pounds. No, it's not. Nope. It's six. It's six foot pounds. 72 divided by 12. That's six. Now, it's important to note as you tighten the rest of these, you can go right to 72 inch pounds. But you still want to work your bam, 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 bam. Work your way out center where you already have the torque and it takes a little bit but it's not too bad of a job now 
I just hit 144 inch pounds to get 12 foot pounds. This math is cool. It's starting to look like a motor again. Yeah. So the last round that you do for your torquing of the intake is going to be at the 12 foot pounds. <laughs> well, in case I didn't, I'm going to tell you right now. Well, that battery's dead. Now as you start to wrap up your project, just be sure that you don't miss any connectors or any vacuum lines. And if you're not good at memorizing these things or knowing how your engine's set up, then it's a good idea to label everything as you take it apart. Um, I want to say that at the end of the video, 
because I wanted that to really stick with you and you remember that. Label your stuff if you don't know what you're doing. This whole project took me about six and a half hours of labor and about $200 in parts. And uh, at the end here, you see my dad did help me out by putting the new battery terminals on for me just to save me an extra 10 minutes. I just want to thank everybody for watching and if anybody has any questions about any of the steps along the way, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll do my best to give you an answer. You gotta take pride in putting your plenum kit on. Now everybody knows. They go, hey, truck's running nice. I say, yeah. Look at that air cleaner. Go get yourself a plenum plate. <laughs>